welcome, welcome as we come together to praise God and to experience the healing power of God's presence in our lives. Just a reminder, everybody, please fill out one of these cards and put them in the collection plate. We appreciate that. And now remember that God is always present. Christ is with us. And may the peace of knowing Christ be with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Thank you. 
king has come to see us. In Mark, according to most scholars, chapter 10, verse 45, is Jesus' purpose. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Mark wants us to ask just what this service is and how it's come, it sets us free. Aha. Uh -huh. And of course, the usual answer is the cross. That's kind of hard for us to accept. So Mark places up at the beginning of the gospel these words from Jesus. He says he's going to travel around to proclaim the message everywhere. So that is what I came to do, he said. <coughs> and the text says, he went through Galilee proclaiming the message in the synagogues and casting out demons. So friends, <clears throat> listen and then ask what this means for the people that Jesus encountered and for us. So please stand if you are able for the gospel reading, which is from Mark chapter 1, 29 through 39. As soon as they left, the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. Then he went, he went out throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out the demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Amen.
So friends, what then is the message and the actions of Jesus that are at the heart of his mission of service? So we can recap what we already know about chapter 1. Jesus' first words are, the time is fulfilled. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus is fulfilling the promises and prophecies in the prophecies of Daniel and Ezekiel. That God would send a Messiah to set them free from oppression and restore their relationship with God. Indeed, that people would live in the realm of God. And he only asked them to change their minds enough to believe that God was doing this. Lest those of us who heard the gospel or hear it today think that this meant that Jesus was going to be some kind of ordinary conquering warrior type. Mark shows us in the first work of Jesus is to heal an elderly woman and her poor neighbors of all sorts of ailments. Instead of blasting away the enemies of Judaism on the fields of battle, Jesus went into villages of no consequence whatsoever and he healed ordinary people. He drove out evil that afflicted the health and spirit of people with gentleness and love. When Jesus said that the kingdom of God has come near, he meant it, that it was right there, that God was healing the world and restoring the proper order and beauty one person at a time. It's not that Jesus was going to ignore or shrink before the huge systems of injustice in the world. Rather, he's going to serve the kingdom of God by living out the message of love and healing in the face of abuse and evil so that the evil is revealed but not fed with the energy of people. Recently, we've had the example of women who have come out and said they've been subjected to sexual harassment and abuse and raped by men in power, coming out to name them and their actions in public. Great names have toppled in the court of public opinion. Justice is beginning to come because these brave folks have focused the light on the dark recesses of our culture. Similarly, we remember that after apartheid in South Africa, there was the Great Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which shone a light into the depths of the horrors of apartheid. Coming of God's truth and love into the lives of ordinary people was not only what Jesus spoke, but his actions of healing and the healing that the disciples did as well, as they lived into the reality of God's order, the new creation. The distinction that many make today between faith and action and secular and sacred was unknown in those days. And Jesus points out there is no such distinction. We are to practice a life of faith through the actions that enact the healing message of God in the lives of other people. Our task is to bring healing love, the healing love of God, to everyone. We're not some kind of disembodied spirit or brain. We're embodied children of God born to live out the power of the gospel in the world so that all the world is reconciled and healed in relationship to God and God's original good design. That's not to say, you know, that we have to be all pure and, and keep ourselves clean and away from everything that is corrupt and suffering in the world. Quite the contrary, we are to get dirty, loving those who are wounded and suffering, touching the untouchable, going where the self-righteous will not go, 
and aging, engaging where others see only the unhealthy and the unholy. His friends was part of our Methodist movement that took the lead in establishing health clinics and hospitals, hospices, schools, prison ministries, protections for exploited children and women, temperance work, homeless shelters, food for those in need, and countless other programs. Wesley is known to have said that there is no other gospel than a social gospel. We are never to forget that the whole gospel of love was what Jesus taught and lived. You see, we're not a head religion, a body of ideas we defend, but a religion of the whole person, head, heart, and hands, united in spirit for the reconciliation of the world to Jesus' mission. That's no mean or petty aim. But it's carried out. It's carried out in countless small and humbling tasks each day. Each act we take, we can see in the light of Jesus' own mission, is healing, healing bodies and souls and spirits and social systems and the natural world around us. Whether it's using less fossil fuel, polluting less water, participating in economic systems less that rely upon slavery and exploitation, caring for the bodies and health of others. We are called to act, to act with love, to bring healing to one another. Now, you know, we read again and again about salvation in the Scriptures. And we all say, yes, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you experience salvation, and that is true. But salvation is the same word in Greek as healing, reconciliation. It's not just about our beliefs. It's about transformation. We are gifted by God, by Jesus' service, And we're invited to respond in the same way with this gift by sharing it with others so that the healing that comes to us goes to others. It might be nice to be the only person to survive the bubonic plague, but it'd be pretty lonely. And there are Christians who find that is acceptable for them. But I cannot see Jesus living that way. Jesus was about making sure that the least and the least important, the most marginal, those who were least liked, are given the benefit of God's grace and love, and that we are to be the ones who carry it into the world. So how will we each take up this gift of healing and share it? How will you share it? I think the more grateful we are for this gift of healing, the more we are able to share it with others, as Jesus did with Peter's mother-in-law. Now, just a moment here. Women in that culture did not matter. A mother-in-law was not important. But Jesus saw her importance, her value as a child of God. Jesus saw her and loved her and brought healing to her. Who is not important in our society today? Who is disposable, ignorable? How can we bring that person healing And this healing business, it's not necessarily a cure. Sometimes cures happen. I have seen prayer leading to cures, documented by doctors. But a lot of the time, it is a diminishment of pain. Almost always when we pray for a diminishment of pain, the pain goes down. 
And always God brings healing to our inner being. When we ask for it, when we look for it, God's healing comes to that inner being. Gradually, you see, God is trying to reassemble all the broken parts of the world into the whole that God intended. There's a movie based on a book by a guy named Girzoni. And this fella named Joshua. And uh, a crystal vase is smashed. It's a prized possession of a woman. And as a parting gift, this Joshua reassembles all those pieces, not into the vase it was once, but into a beautiful sculpture. So it is in our lives and in our world that there are countless broken pieces that God is ready to reassemble in some new and beautiful way, if we will allow it. Shortly, we will be having a service of healing. We will say some prayers, and you will be invited to come forward for a very brief prayer, anointing with oil. And um, think about what it is that you would like to see healed in yourself and in the world, or in the lives of those you love. Bring that forward. So let us pray. O oh Lord, you know that we are broken people. You know that our world is broken. Our bodies get old and sag, and they break down. Our social systems are broken. We are part of systems that exploit and destroy human life. O oh Lord, in so many ways, we are not living in the kingdom that you have destined us to live in. Help us to yearn so deeply for that new creation that we submit to your healing touch, and that you enter into us with grace and power, and that you open us to a new life of healing, and that you call us forth into the service that you have given us that all the world might know your love. Amen.
Dieu, notre Père, Créateur du ciel et de la terre, nous te rendons grâce, nous te glorifions, mon Dieu, mon Roi. Nous te disons merci pour cette bonne nouvelle. Oh, mon Dieu, tu as une mission spéciale pour sauver les âmes perdues. Oh, mon Dieu, tu as une mission spéciale pour sauver les possessions démoniaques. Et tu es capable de nous donner la vie. Et tu es capable de nous délivrer. Tu es capable de nous racheter. Oh Seigneur Dieu, nous t'avons encore dans ces lieux. Délivre ceux qui sont perdus. Oh Seigneur, délivre ceux qui sont dans les mauvaises voies. Guéris les malades. Guéris ceux qui t'invoquent jour et nuit dans ces lieux, mon Dieu, mon roi, puisque ta main n'est pas courte, elle est longue pour sauver. Ta main n'est pas courte, elle est longue pour délivrer. Oh Seigneur, nous te sommes très reconnaissants, car tu as une mission spéciale pour nous, sauver ceux qui sont perdus. Nous voulons avoir la vie éternelle, mon Dieu, mon roi. Que tu sois au milieu de nous et que tu nous rachètes, que tu nous donnes la force du Saint-Esprit, que tu nous donnes la vie éternelle. Sois glorifié, sois élevé, mon Dieu, mon roi. Nous te glorifions dans ces lieux puisque tu es le seul Dieu qui existe et qui restera pour toujours. Tu es Alpha, Oméga. Nous prions au nom de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Amen. St. James said, are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick if the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. We are blessed to have this gift from God of healing, long lost in our church in the West, and yet restored by God's own hand in countless churches over the past 50 years, 100 years, beginning with the Azusa Street Church in California. Another example where our African-American brothers and sisters led the way, the renewal of our faith. And so I have oil here. Let me pray over. I think Mary Ellen has some oil too.
Oh, God, the giver of health and salvation, we give you thanks for this gift of oil. For your holy apostles anointed many who were sick and healed them. So pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on this gift that those who in faith and repentance receive this anointing may be made whole through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so... There will be three stations, one in the middle and one t on each side. And you're invited to come forward. You may kneel or stand. Um, if you wish to have prayer verbally for something specific or for someone else, you can say that or you can just come forward. If you don't want to come forward, that's okay. You can pray for healing in your, street, in your seats. I invite you now to come looking for the healing of God. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Almighty God, we pray that our sisters and brothers may be comforted in their suffering and made whole. When they are afraid, give them courage. When they are, feel weak, grant them your strength. When they are afflicted, afford them patience. When they are lost, offer them hope. When they are alone, move us to their side. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Your source of healing is this meal through the presence of our Lord Jesus in these simple foods God brings healing to our souls and spirits and lives after our prayers are completed you're welcome to come forward and stand and kneel and receive those who wish gluten free will be on my left your right just ask And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give effects to the Lord our God. It is the right, a good, a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give effects to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, when darkness covered the face of the earth and nothing existed but chaos, your spirit swept across the waters. You spoke but a word and light was separated from darkness. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power and mighty, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Who lived among us in new human pain and suffering. Who called all who were burdened and heavy laden and gave them rest. Who healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. Who cast out demons and showed us the way to you through faith who took our suffering upon himself, that we might be cleansed of our sins and receive eternal life. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivering us from slavery to sin and death, and making with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in wait, he gave himself up for us. He took the bread, gave effect to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave the thanks to you, 
gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant put out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gather here, and on this gift of bread and wine. Make them before us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By the but, same Spirit, heal us in body, mind, and spirit, cleansing away all that would separate us from you. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at that heavenly banquet. Through Christ. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we Holy Spirit, in you Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away our sin. And we have the body of Christ for the body of Christ. All persons, everyone who seeks to be at peace with God and one another is welcome at this table.
us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the whole mystery. May you give yourself to us. We give ourselves for all of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for worshiping this morning. Um, I think, Brian, before you sing, you need to... Um, would you go get Joy, please? Uh, Isabel, I think she's in the dining room. She's... Anyway, we're waiting for Joy. It's great to have you all here. And um, I uh, hope that you have a blessed week. Um, and on, remember the 14th, there are seven churches. We have First, Second, South Congregational, St. Stephen's, Zion, uh, Price Memorial, and First Methodist. So three Congregational, two Methodist, and then a scattering of Lutherans and Episcopalians. And we'll all be here. So I hope you will come and be part of that wonderful service on the 14th. Okay. Other announcements? That's 7 o'clock. Bring your friends. Now, Joy. I have the icing from the brownies on my hand right now. So uh, that's good. She's been licking all of them. Well, Joy, this week, Joy is turning 102 years old. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Good. Happy birthday to you. Good. Happy birthday, dear Joy. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. And on the other end of the scale. Well, I will teach you one that you have. All right, brothers and sisters. May the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit fill you and surround you, and may the peace of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be in your heart always. Amen.